In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at Python's exception handling. Exception handling is what, ha is what you do when something goes wrong. So let's take it 1 divided by 0. If you do that, you will get a trace back. It will tell you what line the error occurred on and what the error was. In this case, we did a zero division error because you cannot divide by zero, obviously. Now, what can we do to catch this? In Python, you create a try and accept uh, block. So here we do try 1 divided by 0, and then we need an accept. And we want to catch the zero division error. Let's just do that. And we'll give it, print out a message. You cannot divide by zero. All right, let's see if this works. So in this case, instead of getting a trace back, it actually prints out the exception message. Now, another way to catch this particular exception is with a bare accept. A bare accept is when you don't specify what exception you're catching. So in this case, it just try and accept with no, no specific exception listed. This is actually not recommended because you can't really tell what exceptions you're catching here. You're just catching everything. But it does work, as you can see. Most of the time what you'll want to do is do a try accept and the name of the exception that you're trying to catch. So let's go back and take the zero division one. We can actually chain a couple of these together. So let's say we want to like chain the type error on here. So now this will catch both. Whoops. I did something wrong there. Let's see. Let's try this one. So if you want to chain multiple exceptions together, you can put them in parentheses. This is something that sometimes you'll end up guessing at because you just don't do it very often. Most people will actually do a slightly different paradigm if you want to do multiple exceptions. So I'll show you that way too, because this is actually more common. Most of the time you don't chain them together, but I should show I just wanted to show you that because you will see it from time to time. The more common way to do it though is to just write multiple accepts. So in this case we do type error and print out something different. Of course, that will never run because you don't actually have a type error in that try block. There are a whole bunch of different errors that you can get. There's an import error if you try to import something that you not that doesn't exist, like import something. That's not a real module, so you'll get an import error. Or if you try to um, use your string in a weird way, so let's say we have a string with one, two, three. If you try to, you can access strings using the string spli uh, splicing method, one to two, and that works just fine. But if you do uh, three to five, or just go to the end. What if you go to an index that doesn't exist? What happens then? You end up with an index error because there are not five characters in the string one, two, three. There are lots of other errors like keyboard interrupt, OS error, IO error for if you try to open a file that doesn't exist or you don't have permission to open. Just lots of good stuff. Let's go on and try a couple other items. For example, one thing that you'll see a lot is the finally statement. So let's say we have try and we have one divided by zero once more. We have a good accept for the zero division part. I'm going to type some of this right over again. Basically you Oops. Can't do that. And then we have the mystery of the finally statement. The finally statement will always execute, no matter what. 
So if you run this, you'll get the zero division error print out, and then you'll get the finally print out. Now, why would you want the finally? What I use it for is for like closing up a database or a file that is being errant. So let's say you have a, a weird database error that it, the internet drops and you can't connect to the database anymore. Well, you want to catch that in a graceful way instead of having your program just die. So you catch it with your regular exception, but then you need to clean up and close any empty handles. So you close your database connection and you close your file handles and anything else, or you close a thread. That's where you put the in the finally statement. There's one more item that we should probably look at, and that is known as the else. The else is for what happens if there is no error whatsoever. And it's actually kind of silly because I don't think I've ever seen it used. But let's just pretend. So we'll take this and we'll add an else to it. And it didn't like something there. Oh yes, you can't use, you can't have a finally statement and an else statement. That was my bad. So let's get rid of this. And we'll get rid of this too. Okay. I'll just print out nothing bad happened if, in fact, nothing bad happened. All right. So the zero division error is still getting executed. And that means that, of course, something bad happened. So let's make this a little bit more interesting and make it so that something bad doesn't happen. And let's do one divided by one. Now if we run this, the else will execute. It prints out one divided by one, which is 1.0. Nothing bad happened. Now most of the time, in my coding experience, you don't even bother with the else, you do the try except, and then any code following the try except just gets executed, so you don't even need to put anything in the else block. So it's really up to you if you really want to use that. I've seen some places where you might want to do it, where you like raise a special error, like it was like you expected an error to happen, or you just want something special to happen, so you just put a raise in there, which is something else we should probably look at. There's the raise keyword, and you can actually raise errors. So let's say we want to raise a type error here. Here's a type error. You can give it a custom message. You broke something. And it'll print out your type error and your custom message. You broke something. This is really helpful when you need to print out something that you know something bad happened and you have an idea of what it was, but you don't want to make sure you raise an error for it. So. You know, you expected an error to happen here. So you could just raise, you know, a general exception you know, that you expected something else to happen here, like um, something should have happened. You just don't expect it to continue properly at this point. I personally have never seen this happen, but according to people on the web, they have had this happen to them, and you guys should know that this is how you would use an else statement. It's up to you whether or not you really want to. I personally have it in almost 10 years of programming. But once again, now you know how to use it. And that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.